Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to CoasterNet Updates. We've got some news out of Bush Gardens, Tampa, where we have learned that there is RMC Iron Horse Track on site at Tampa, um, and it is officially purple. Pink! Oh, no. Purple. It's pink. purple. No, it's not I, pink. Okay. <laughs> this is as purple as you get, Danny. There, there's no questioning that this is purple track. Um, so, you know, we start thinking about, you know, what this means for the ride's theme. We don't have a name for this ride yet. We're still calling it Quasi. Um, and, and interestingly enough, uh, when you, if you recall the old Quasi logo, the tiger half of it had a lot of purple in it. Sometimes the tiger yeah. was white. Sometimes the tiger was purple. When the tiger is white, it was outlined in purple. Um, so maybe there's right. a lot of the print media, I think, and like the park maps had the, had it as a white tiger head outlined in purple. But the signage in the actual park, um, if you if you uh, Google Guazi logo, um, you will find a lot of different versions. A lot of the print versions have it white outlined in purple. But then the the actual signs that were on the ride had the purple. Uh, the tiger head was actually purple. So, and, and I don't think that they're going to make another tiger-themed ride. That, that they just did Tigris um, over in the other half of the park, uh, the, the new work coaster that's opening up this year. Uh, they also trademarked Uproar and Twisted Tigers, but I feel as like both of those could have been for Tigris alternate names. Um, you know, we, throw, we threw around the idea of them maybe putting VR on Kumba and calling it Uproar. So I don't feel like either of those names are going to be for uh, this new Guazi conversion, but... Yeah, I, yeah. well, and we, we thought of uproar because Kumba, I believe, is the Congo language translation for, yeah. for roar, um, if I remember correctly, which is why we thought there was a bit of a connection there. Um, but it, we, we started playing around a little bit today with going along that same vein... And like Montu being the Egyptian god of war. And we started doing some translating to see if we could stumble across something that sounds good for a name. And Andy, you and I came up with a couple of ideas. So where, well, where do you want to start here? Well, first, I, I, I think first we have to say that this, that this section of the park really is kind of undefined for the most part. I, if, if I had to classify it closest is Nairobi, that you start off in that Moroccan village uh, and then you have that Nairobi section and, and I think since Kumba was Congonese, we said that uh, Nairobi is where they speak Swahili. So that would be the language that we're kind of honing in on uh, for different, uh, you know, stuff. Right, because Nairobi is the capital of, uh, of Kenya, and uh, Kenya and Tanzania border one another. Uh, they both major, uh, majority are Swahili speaking. So, and I know Swahili from first grade. We studied Africa and actually learned a little bit of uh, Swahili language way back when. Um, so we started doing some tran translation of different words into Swahili. Now we didn't find any, we didn't find a whole lot um, that really interests us. I mean, like lion is Simba, right? <laughs> probably not naming probably the not use that one. Um, the, the, the first one that I came across that I liked, uh, was the word twisted. Uh, so I did an English to Swahili translation on the word, oh, and I lost the page now. So I did an English to Swahili translation on the word, uh, twist, um, not twisted, twist. And that one is Kusanga. So I, I think that's okay. Like, oh, let's go to Bush Gardens, Tampa. We're going to ride Kumba, Mantu, Shikra, and Kusanga. I think that sounds okay. It sounds, it sounds nice. The thing I thought of was the big feature of Kenya and Tanzania is Mount Kilimanjaro. And, and they, that's the one thing that they really haven't ever touched that, you know, there were rumors that this section, uh, you know, a few years ago was going to become an Australian section. And I, I'm completely against that. I, I don't, I, I don't want to see them bring in outside continents and outside flavors. I love how this park is uniquely African uh, from start to finish and represents the different areas of Africa. And I would say that the Nairobi section is probably the most underrepresented section at the park. Stanleyville has a lot of cool rides. Congo, Abu Jangala uh, has, has a lot of cool stuff going on. They made up Pantopia in the middle, whatever that means. Um, yeah. uh, but I, I think if they change this Nairobi section, having a Kilimanjaro uh, 
type theme, a mountain theme to this ride, which would make sense. And you learn something interesting about Kilimanjaro and, and, and what's going on there. So why don't you tell us about what, what Mount Kilimanjaro actually is? Right. So according to the Wikipedia page for Mount Kilimanjaro here, or just Kilimanjaro, um, it, is, it is constructed mainly of three volcanic cones, uh, which are, uh, it's a dormant volcano, uh, technically in Tanzania. It's the highest mountain in all of Africa, uh, a little over 16,000 feet from its base. Um, and it's got three volcanic cones known as Kibo, Mawenzi and Shira. Um, Kibo being uh, K-I-B-O is your spelling there. Kibo, Kaibo, I believe it's Kibo, um, being the tallest of the three and I guess the most visually impressive, right? Um, and, and you thought, you immediately said, well, any of those might be, I, I would be okay with a yeah. name as any of those. I, I would think Kibo would be maybe the, the first one you would go to. And let's remember that right here in the United States already in Tennessee at Dollywood, we have a roller coaster named Thunderhead, uh, which which is sort of themed after a mountain, right? So uh, we've seen something like that happen before. Um, and then an, uh, I sort of springboarded off of your idea there and said, well, if you went back to the uh, English, and I'm going to probably r ruffle some feathers here, uh, but I mean, you and I have been as vocal as just about anyone about Volcano of the Blast Coaster being taken out. Um, what if you named it Volcano or the Swahili translation of Volcano, which is Volcano with a K? And then you could have the purple track. You could have like fire red and yellow, uh, almost the opposite of what Volcano of the Blast Coaster had because Volcano had uh, some orange train, uh, orange trains. Yeah. Um, you know, they, they did have some, uh, purple and whatnot in the logo on some of their patches and pins that they sold over the years. Um, so what if you had purple track with the fire red and bright yellow trains going along this purple track and called it Balcano or something? I, I, is it too soon? I don't know. I don't know that they care, but uh, yeah. I mean, you and I kind of talked about that a little bit. I, I, I think any of those ideas are really cool. And when you start breaking it down, Kilimanjaro, the tallest co the tallest mountain in Africa. This is going to be the tallest hybrid, not the tallest ride, because Falcon's Fury is still going to be taller uh, right. than this. It's going to be it's going to be the tallest coaster though. Shikra is not two hundred feet, right? Two ten. Uh, Shikra, I think, is like two hundred five. So it's going to be. And, and people are saying closer. that, and, and we we posted the story this week uh, that this is looking like it's going to be two ten. Um, with the height variance that they've requested from the FAA and all that. So, so it will be the tallest coaster in the park. Um, so, so having it, having it, this Kilimanjaro theme, I think would be really cool. Now, if you want to go animal, because everything else is kind of named after an animal at the park, Shikra, Cobra's Curse, well, Montu's not, Montu's the Egyptian god of war, you said? Correct? Yeah, but he was depicted, uh, Montu is depicted by, uh, uh, head of a hawk. Yeah, so it's still, you got so. Falcon's Fury, you got Kumba, you got Cheetah Hunt. Um, if you wanted to go animal, the only animal that I think that was really cool in the park is the rhino, and they got rid of Rhino Rally. Maybe you could make this into a rhino-themed coaster, but that's, okay. I, I kind of backed off on that because that's already been done by, like, Rampage. They had the, you know, Rampage used to have the Jurassic Park circle with the rhino head in it um, was the classic logo. And then they've switched right. to just text-based um, recently. Yeah, I think there's a lot of different ways you could go with this. And you even threw out the idea of, you know, you could have three big hills that sort of look like the three Yeah, like, like, like if you, like this thing is sounding like, if you start looking at what people were putting together and, and we don't have a definitive layout, people put together some fan art of what the layout could be and a lot of them had like two or three big hills in it. And, and I, I think you could be representative of that, of that Kilimanjaro. Um, well, and, for, and for what it's worth, uh, you know, I drove up to Six Flags New England yesterday for the day just to get some coasters in. And actually ran into a friend of mine from college who currently works for Disney. And, uh, you know, he gets to interact with a lot of different people from the industry. And he, he claims, now take this with a grain of salt, he claims to have spoken to some people from RMC in the last several months. And what he told me, again, take it with a grain of salt, is that RMC Guazi will be the most twisted 
of the RMCs and that they're going to try some new things and some new elements with the mindset that the mindset from this person that they spoke to was don't know if we can do anything better than steel vengeance. So let's try and do something completely yeah. different. You know, steel vengeance does have its twisted moments, but really is a lot of really good Hills and simple yeah. maneuvers that are just executed, uh, executed, uh, Perfectly. Uh, so maybe they're going to go in a different direction and do something extremely twisted, uh, unique, out of the ordinary, and have some new elements with the ride itself. We don't really have much of a layout. All we've really seen is that lift hill with the little stall thing going underneath it, yeah. with, which looks a little bit different than something we've seen before. So, and I and I think that's good. I think that's okay. Uh, you know, it's. It's going to be really hard to do something better than Steel Vengeance. So if you're not sure if you can do it, why not do something completely different? And if that's the mindset, then I say, why not give it a shot? Do something new. Yeah, I'm just quickly looking up if there's any, you know, Tanzanian um, animals that are like exclusive. Yeah. And it's, it's leopards and stuff, but they've already kind of done that. So I, I, I don't know. I think Kilimanjaro... If I if I had to put money on it right now, I'd probably put money on this theme somehow being themed to Kilimanjaro, being themed to volcano, being themed to that somehow. Because I, I think I think it makes a whole lot of sense that that's the one piece of Africa that's really been missing in in Bush Gardens, uh, Tampa, uh, from its very beginning, and and that's a huge part of Africa is Kilimanjaro being the tallest mountain there. So, yeah, I think there's a, I, I think there's a really good, uh, I think you have a really good uh, point there. And I, I'm excited to see where they go with this because I think there's options and there's options to do some really cool stuff. So uh, let's see what they come up with here. And, you know, really the next year at this point. Uh, and, you, and from all reports, they are cutting away a lot of the Gwazi structure. So a lot like they did with right. Steel Vengeance where, they, to me, it seemed like they cut away the entire middle section of the ride um, right. and left the two ends there. Um, and I hear that they're cutting a whole lot away from Gwazi as well. So hopefully we, we get something really cool. And, and once this track, uh, this purple track, which was the point of us starting this, once <laughs> the purple track starts going up on the structure, I think we're going to get a much better idea of what this ride's going to be all about. So I, I'm pretty excited by this. Well, and this should be fun because we haven't seen a purple RMC, right? I mean, the, the first several were the reddish orange color with, you know, Texas giant and then iron rattler and then wicked cyclone was orange as well. And then twisted Colossus was green and blue. I begged for them to do that, that blue color for wicked cyclone at new England uh, because that ride originally had blue uh, running mm -hmm. rails. Uh, along the handrails. The, the closest we've come is really Storm Chaser that has the purple train. But that's Storm Chaser has the purple trains, but it still has the red track. Has the red uh, track. Twisted Colossus has the blue and green. Twisted Cyclone has the blue, uh, the blue which I really liked. Um, yeah. You know, I really like that blue color that they've used. Um, and we've seen a lot of uh, the brown lately, the brownish burgundy you know, natural earthy color uh, that we saw for Twisted Timbers, Steel Vengeance, I think Untamed, Untamed uh, yeah. over in Europe is also getting that same color. Uh, we saw the blue for the uh, the Japan, uh, the white yeah. whale there, yeah. Haku, Haku guy that just opened up. Um, so I, I don't know that we've, the closest we've seen in terms of purple is the, the one side of the rail on Joker, Discovery Kingdom, yeah. where we saw the half blue, half green. So is that yeah, that's really cool? Well, what if they did this? What if they did half purple, half yellow? Did that well, and that was something else. What if they did blue and yellow, or uh, purple and yellow, or purple and orange, or something to kind of have a callback to? Okay, it's only one track now, but we've got purple and yellow. We've got bits of lion and tiger both here. Uh, I think that's a distinct possibility. Yeah, that would be really cool too. So yeah. uh, we will keep you updated here on what's going on uh, with. Uh, the Gwazi conversion down at Bush Gardens. Um, as always, I am Andrew Barczak from Chicago, Illinois. I'm Danny Miller from Binghamton, New York. Right on, right, Warriors. Thanks, guys. See you next time.